Hey guys, it's Aaron. So not too long ago, we released a video that showed how to make a practical mirror by taking a room, making it into a component, mirroring it over, and then you know putting a hole that you could look through that would represent a mirror. So when you actively moved through the model in SketchUp, it looked like there's a real reflection happening in real time over there. Very cool. It was, it was a fun one to do, uh, and you guys seem to like it a lot. A uh, couple people on that asked, could you do that with like a floor? So if I had a reflective floor, like a shiny floor, how would I do that? So I figured, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it out. So that's what we're going to do right here. So we're going to hop in here and use this model that's on the screen to make a reflective floor, actively reflective in SketchUp. I don't know. I don't know what the term would be. Maybe you can help me. If you have a good idea for what we call this process where we create real-ish, well, you know, the thing we do. Leave it in the comments down below and tell me what I'm doing. All right. Now let's go ahead and do it. So, okay, so I have this little kitchen here. You can see it's uh, it's pretty simple. I do have the floor as a group, my walls are group, appliances are group. It's all groups, it's a bunch of groups. So first thing, of course, I'm gonna do is take it all and make it into a single component. So I'm gonna go ahead and make component. I'm just gonna call it room. There we go. And I'm gonna make a copy of it. Just use my modifier key and move to make a copy of it over here. And I'm gonna use scale right now. Pull scale down to negative one. And then this is the simple part, right? This is what, basically what we did before. And I'm gonna put it underneath there. So that's what we're starting with, is a copy of the exact same component underneath itself. That's the simple part. But obviously, right now, our floor is not shiny. Uh, it is just that same material, whatever that, that material that's on there, that marbly material. So one thing we're going to have to do is make this transparent so I actually see this room below inside. So I'm going to go ahead and double click to enter this component. Now, here's the thing I'm going to run into. This floor has no depth. It is just a single surface, and that's the way we want it. That is correct. That's how it should be. But because the floor down here is also no depth, I'm going to run into an issue when I try to, potentially when I try to pick things. So if I double click to enter this floor, one of the things that can happen is as I'm picking, I can actually get my other component down below. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to View, Component, Edit, and Hide similar components. Hide rest of model is already turned on, but you can see this is showing up down here because this is not the rest of the model. Mark was the rest of the model and he's gone. This is actually a copy of the component. So I'm gonna turn on hide similar components to get rid of that. So I don't have to worry about uh, what piece I am or I'm not picking on. I'm gonna double click to em enter my floor group here. And you see like it says just a single surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my paint bucket, bring up my color swatches. You can see I have a lot of colors in this model. Uh, and I'm going to pick this color. So it's gonna show it to me right here. Now this is the only place I have this material in this model. So that means I can double click on the swatch and I can actually use the transparency slider to make it more transparent. If I had this in here more than once, what I would want to do is pick it once. So I'll come in here, pick it, and then actually modify and reapply it as a new instance. Uh, like I said, because it's the only spot that I have in the entire model, I can just use the slider with it selected right now. I'm gonna drop this to, I don't wanna drop it too much because I want it to look shiny, not see-through. So I'm gonna take it to like 80% and see how that looks. So with that at 80%, I can go ahead and exit my floor and exit. And what's gonna happen as soon as I exit is my other copy of this component's gonna show up down below. And look what happens when that shows up. Ugh. Well, that looks way worse. So what we're seeing right now is the actual backside of this floor down below. 
because that is 100% opacity and my other is 80%, the 100% is showing up over top of my transparent material. So what do we do about that? Well, fortunately, well, that's kind of why we're here. I'm gonna double click to enter into this component and then I'm gonna double click to enter into the floor again. So right now, the top floor is 80%, so I can see through, see the blue axes back there, you can just make it out. The bottom side is a 100% opacity back side of the default material. So this material right now is this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna mess with the default material, I'm not gonna try to make that more transparent like we did with this. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna create a brand new material. I'm gonna come over here and pick a color. I'm just gonna use my mark or my color pencils to pick a, a bright, obnoxious magenta color and I'll apply that to the bottom. That in itself did not help. That's not, not the solution. What I'm gonna do now is I can actually change that to 100% opacity, reapply it, and now it's see-through from this side, but 80% opaque from this side. Real important, one of the things you don't want to do when you do this is have materials pre-selected. If I pre-select, I'm actually selecting both sides. So I want to make sure that when I use the paint bucket, I'm just applying that material to, I'm applying that 100% uh, opacity material to a single surface just by dropping on there, not pre-selecting. All right, so what we've got now is we have a component with a floor that is 80% opaque on this side and 100% transparent on this side. So if I click out, I should get, there it is, there's my nice reflective, ooh, super shiny floor reflection using components and transparency inside Sketch. Oh, hi Mark. You will notice that Mark is not in the reflection. See that, he's not down here below because he's not actually part of the component. If that was important, if we wanted to make sure we were reflecting Mark also, what I'd wanna do is select him, edit and cut, go into this component, edit, paste in place. And now if we come out here, we'll see, well, this is actually gonna get a little funky because to make that work out right, I'd have to get something like this. So maybe best to not have my entourage visible through the window <laughs> just to make this line up a little better. So bye Mark. There we go. All right. So there we go. Super shiny floor using just the native tools. And because it's a component, if I was to do something, if I was to make a change, so say I was to come in here and I want to move this light uh, over like that. Because it's a component, when I exit out, I'll actually see that new light location in the reflection. So hopefully you like that. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, a continuation of the one we did earlier, but enough people asked. I figured it was different enough because we had that material between in the, window, or in the uh, mirror, it was just a hole in the wall. So I hope you learned something new from that. Uh, if you did like that, go ahead and click on the like button down below. If you wanna see more videos like this, we release a couple videos like this every single week. And if you hit the subscribe button down below, you'll be notified every time we drop a new video. Most importantly though, please leave a comment. This video right here was created because of comments on the previous video. Like making these videos a lot, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.